Worship this morning, we begin in our invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It doesn't get better than reading Psalm 23 as our text. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That ends our text and also our reading for today. My father was a very quiet man. I should tell you a story to prove it. On the farm one day, dad came in from the shop, sat down to eat. Very traditionally, my mom had all the food on the table. She had it all on his plate. He was ready to go. Dad sat down and he looked at it. And he didn't move. And of course, he didn't say anything. My mother, a fountain of words, noticed that dad wasn't eating, and she says, Edwin, what do you need? It's all there. Speak, Edwin, speak. She literally said that sentence. It became famous in our family lore. Speak, Edwin, speak. After a long pause, my dad said, salt. Oh, for heaven's sake, my mother says. You that's all you need. You could get up and get it yourself, you know, as she goes to get the salt. I suppose you want pepper too. Well, here they are. Now, is there anything else? Not saying a word, my dad salted the food, ate it, and five minutes later was back in the shop. That's a quiet man. How did you hear my mother say, is there anything else? What more do you want? By the way, if my mother asked you that question at that moment, what more do you want? What would you say? Nothing, would you? I, I wouldn't even go with the salt if I were my dad. I would just go, good, it's all good. I mean, when people say to you, what more do you want? What are they expecting as an answer? It's good. Maybe at most, something as small as salt. Unless they're God. Unless God asked you that question. If God asked you, what more do you want? Amazingly, he wants a different answer from us. He wants something more than silence or salt. He wants us to ask because he's got it ready. And this is the psalm that brings that out better than any I can imagine. What more do you want? Let's go see what he's got ready for us. Now, he could start with something very simple. I gave you life. I mean, here you are. All true, Lord. What more do you want? Uh, well, expanding on my father's salt theme, uh, I need food. I need a place to stay. I need the clothes I have to wear. And God says, no problem. I am the shepherd. You are the lamb. Let me show you the pasture I've put out for you. Let me show you the still waters I've got for you. And isn't that the wonderful beginning of this psalm? The Lord is our shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. I lack nothing. And that's true. You had breakfast, or at least you had the opportunity for breakfast. You'll have lunch. Dinner is waiting. We had a warm, safe bed to lie in last night, and it's waiting for you, if not for a nap this afternoon, at least for bedtime tonight. Lord, you've done it. You've given us the wherewithal that lambs need. You fed us. You protected us. What more could we want? Well, that's how he asked it. Now, what more do you want? But we've got to change our mind, it seems to me. I want you to replace my mother with your grandmother. Get away from my mother asking dad, what more do you want? To, you've just eaten the first course of your grandmother's killer Easter or Thanksgiving meal. 
And when she's finished feeding you the first round, she's going to say to you, what more can I get you? Is this a time to come up with, oh, I don't know, some 1,200-calorie-a-day diet plan? No, 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 no. You must come up with some need that she is ready to fulfill because, oh, my gosh, the fridge is full. The second course is bursting out of the oven. There's stuff waiting. Come up with something. What more can I get you? God really says that. He's fed us. He's given us our beds. He's clothed us. And now he says, what more can I get you? And we say, well, you know, Lord, I worry. I don't worry about food. I don't worry about clothes. I don't worry about where I'm going to sleep tonight, but I worry. I worry about my past and how you look at it. I worry how you and I are doing right now because of all of that. I worry about the promises I make that I don't think I'm going to keep. I worry how my past is going to affect my future because you remember it. Lord, I'm worried about my heart and my soul with you. And we could go on and on, couldn't we? And God smiles through it all and he says, I know you do. And here's what I do. I restore souls. I heal hearts. Isn't that the wonderful change in this psalm? After he meets us as a shepherd meets sheep, sheep who only need pasture and water and a safe place to lie, we are instantly made more than sheep. We have souls. We are ourselves. We are people. We have souls, and that's more pressing than just our food and clothes. And so he says the next thing. He restores my soul. Isn't that wonderful? He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God says, I know you worry about that past. I know you worry about our relationship. I know you worry about the future and what's going to be brought over from the past. I know. I restore your soul. I heal your heart. I have put away the old path, and I put in front of you mine, not of your following, my son. That's how I see you, in his path, in his perfect path, that's where I've put you, in my mind and in my judgment. It is well. Isn't that a wonderful old song? It is well. It is well with my soul. That's what we can say. That's what we can sing. It's true because we are more than fed lambs. We are restored souls. What more do you want? Well, Lord, that takes care of life. I mean, you've fed me, you've healed me, you've taken care of body and soul, and that's life. That's good. But I'm not going to live forever, Lord. So I was wondering about death. What's it going to be like? What's going to happen? When everything you've got, as good as it is, is done, what then, Lord? And again, I think he smiles and he says, I know you worry about that too. But let me tell you, he says, we're mountain people. You live on a mountain right now, a mountain of life, and that life is with me. In this mountain of life, I feed you, I care for you, and I heal your soul. And there's another mountain, a lasting place, and that's where you're going to live with me forever. In between these mountains, because we are mountain people, there is one sharp, short shadow of death. And we're going to cross that valley. But here's the thing. We don't live in the valley. We are mountain people. We cross the valley to the other mountain. We don't stay there. And here's what you need to know. It's a shadow. Shadows won't hurt you. They're dark. They're scary. It's a shadow. This valley of death you fear is the shadowy, short place that simply brings you to the other mountain. We live on mountains. We are mountain people. It is a short shadow. And here's the other thing you need to know, he says to us. I'll go with you. Remember who I am. I'm the shepherd. And I'm not going to leave you on this mountain and expect you to somehow get to that mountain all by yourself. What kind of shepherd would I be? I'm the good shepherd. I know about this place. I've been into that shadow of death myself. 
I know the way through. I know the way to get to the other side. I'll go with you. I'm going to bring my rod and my staff, and when we go through that shadow together, don't you forget, I'm the good shepherd. In my rod and my staff, there's this wonderful truth. I've never lost a lamb, and I've never, ever lost you. I won't lose you in the dark of the shadow, and I won't lose my way. What more do you want? Isn't that a marvelous image? This life is complete, and that life is waiting. Maybe the last thing we have to ask him is, well, Lord, when we get past and through that shadow, what's that other mountain going to be like? What, what's waiting? Ah, he smiles, because the shadow of death is long gone, and we are mountain people. And on that mountain, this is what's waiting, a table prepared in the presence of enemies, heads anointed with oil, cups overflowing, banquet. He says, you know the feeding we started with? Here you're fed like sheep. There you'll be fed like sons and daughters. Oh, the difference. As sheep, we're content. It's enough. But do you see the difference in this psalm? It must be unbelievable. Oh, the contrast. Here it's enough to be sheep well-fed, watered, and bedded down. But that's not enough for his picture of what that next mountain's going to be like. Then there's a banquet. Your cup overflows. Your enemies will have to watch it. They won't be invited. Don't you worry. Death and the devil are not at the table. They'll only have to acknowledge and grudgingly admit you're there and they are not. And it overflows. And the best part? We'll eat together. I don't just feed you. I sit down with you. Do you see the wonderful difference? We begin and we're content to have a shepherd feed us only that which lambs can eat. But coming in that next mountain, we're with him. He sits with us. He's at our table. No, we're at his table. It's even better. And it'll never end. And that's the whole package, isn't it? What more do you want? Salt was all my dad asked for. Well, he got it. And he got out of there and went back to his natural environment, the shop. What more do you want? We all know how we're asked that. We all know what little we say when somebody says it. But change your mind when you come to this psalm. You have a new vision of a father who says, what more do you want? No, I mean it. What do you want? I'll feed you like a lamb and guard you. I'll heal your heart and your soul. I'll cross that valley with you, and don't you be afraid of the shadow. And I will sit with you at a banquet that never ends. What more do you want? Amen.